Our next startup is Help Mom, represented by Dr. Adireni Abiodun. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Adireni Abiodun. I'm from Nigeria, and I'm representing Help Mom today. Um, so when I was in my um, final year, um, I, started this with, I started this company with my two of my friends. And basically, what we were trying to do then was we we're going to rural communities to provide health information, free health checkup for pregnant women and nursing mothers because we discovered that they don't have access to proper health care. Then I met this woman, Mrs. Badu. She told me she almost bled to death during her first delivery. She has two children. They've not heard of immunization before, and she has never heard of all the basic essential tools she, need, she needs during delivery. And, this, and she's not the only one here. This is the current problem in Nigeria. Nigeria is the second largest contributor to maternal and infant mortality in the world. We lose over 145 pregnant women daily, and we lose over 2,300 under five children daily. This is a WHO statistic. And sometimes, this number might increase based on the geographical location. Let me give you an instance. In the northern part of Nigeria, where, people, where most women stay, a lot of these communities, with, even with the good government they have, governors they have, they don't have primary health care center. You discover that when a woman is giving birth, they lay her on a bare floor to give birth. When she has a baby, if she's lucky enough to have a baby, the traditional birth attendants will use her mouth to remove mucus from this baby, which sometimes, I mean, someone that is just coming to life can just give this baby infection. There's another one pathetic thing they do. They use the same equipment, like the same blade they use to separate the umbilical cord of the baby from the mother on different women, which causes infection and sometimes leads to maternal mortality. So this is the problem currently. And currently, some also, if they are lucky enough to give birth, they don't give, they don't present their children for immunization. They don't even know what immunization is. If you are trying to tell them about immunization, that I mean, you are trying to tell them something they don't understand. And this is one of the reasons why some of them lose their children to vaccine-related death. I mean, this is something that if they had given their children immunization, it would have been prevented. This is what we are trying to do at Help Mom. Simple. We are, we are solving this problem using three major ASICs. Number one is the Help Mom Clean Birth Kit. Like I, like I said before, this Help Mom Clean Birth Kit contains 11 essential items, mucus extractors, surgical blade, disinfectant, 10 maternity bad, methylated spirit, cord clam, all these things together to provide to these women so that they can be able to have a safe, clean, and hygienic delivery, even if there's no hospital in their community. And we also use, there are people called traditional bad attendants in these communities. So we use them as a mechanism to sell this clean bad kit to them, to sell to women in their community and with a flexible payment plan. The second thing we do is that when we notice that you are lucky enough to give birth, we have this vaccination tracking tool. This vaccination tracking tool basically is where we register them immediately, they give birth to their children, and we start sending them important messages in their own indigenous language on importance of giving their children vaccination, and also sending them reminders to give their children vaccination. But there's a problem here. Most of them sometimes can't read or write. So we decided to incorporate calling them to them. Oh, ma, please, you have to present your child for immunization. If you don't, this child might die. If I come on me, cool. I'm saying that in Europe, if anybody understands, basically. Then the next thing is, how does Help Mom empower women? There's this Help Mom value chain system we have. So one of the reasons I bought this bag, this bag you are seeing here is a woman that is making it. This, the print on the bag is a mother that is making it. The people packing the bag at our office, they are women. The person selling the bag, they are women, the end users are women. So this is a long value chain system to ensure that women are involved in the whole thing we are trying to do and we are trying to save lives with it. And also, this is a growing market. Like I said, sometimes we, rural area, rural area is not rural in Nigeria. Sometimes when you go to some urban community, there are also rural communities because they don't even have the basic, um, basic things that in urban communities meant to have. Some of them don't even have proper clinics. Some of them are even lucky enough to have proper clinics. They are not well furnished. They are not well equipped. So one of the reasons that's why we say over 54 million women stay in these communities that can actually buy this kit. And we have a market gap of over $72 million. These are, we, have competi we have competitions. We have likes of Baby Mingo. We have mother delivery kit. We have ICE. Baby Mingo are mother delivery kit in Nigeria. ICE is in Indian. 
Our own basic differentiating factor is our vaccination tracking tool. Let me give you an instant. Between 20, 20, 2010 and 2019, Javi gave Nigeria over $1 billion for vaccination. And I can tell you that with this $1 billion, there's still low uptake of this vaccination. Low uptake. People don't even know what vaccine is. So our vaccination tracking tool is actually helping to track vaccination defaulters to also present this data to Javi that this thing works, come and partner with us so that we can help you track how many people are actually getting the vaccination. You are donating millions of dollars to every single year. This is our current reach in Nigeria. We've reached out to over 67 communities in seven states in Nigeria. And these are the women we've reached out to with, some of the women we've reached out to with our kids. We've trained. One of the things I've not, I wasn't able to mention is that, like I said, we have traditional bath attendants working in these communities. They, are not, they don't know anything about giving bath. It's just that some of them even inherited working as a traditional bath attendant from their grandmoms. So we train them basically on two major things, postpartum hemorrhage. Postpartum hemorrhage is one of the leading causes of maternal mortality in Nigeria. Just basically using misoprostol to stop it is something that most of them don't know. So we train them on that and also train them on the items of the kids. And we also empower them by providing the kids to them so that they can sell. And a woman in the community that sells our kit makes as high as $1.40 on each, each one. And also, currently on our vaccination tracking system, we have over 23,432 nursing mothers registered on it. So with this, we can send them automated reminders. We can tell them, oh, you have to present your child for immunization. And we are getting data insight from that, that we can start sharing with government agencies that this thing works. Let's be working with your state to track immunization. Javi, stop donating this big, large amount of money to Nigeria. And see, at the end of the day, nothing is working on it. These are our backers. We've been supported by Google. Um, we won the Google Impact Challenge in 2018. We've gotten over $85,000 from Google. We, we are also being supported by the United Nations. We won the competition at the Union headquarters. We've gotten $5,000 from them. We've also been supported by a lot, Tony Lumelu Foundation and the likes. We've been featured on CNN, Disrupt Africa, and other good platforms like that. This is my team. We are all young. And what we are really passionate, most of us, we've won, we have over two years' experience working together on this problem, and we are more passionate about solving this problem using local context. Um, when we won the United Nations competition, a senior expert at the United Nations joined our board to provide more insights. That was one of the reasons why we added the vaccination tracking tool to what we do. We also have a doctor who is a resident doctor at the University College Hospital, and we have a business developer who is working at AfriLab. AfriLab is the largest um, lab organization in Africa. So we decided to bring people from diverse areas so that we can be able to provide support and expertise to us. So our act today is 500K to consolidate our ideas. So because currently we are working majorly in the southwestern region of Nigeria, maybe even know Nigeria very well, we have six geopolitical zones. So we are looking at going around, having a physical presence in all these geopolitical zones so that we can serve all the states within these geopolitical zones and we can be able to reach out to everything. And what can the 10,000 advert price do, which has to 22,000 nursing mothers to register on our vaccination tracking system, help to provide 2,000 clean birth kits to mothers, and also empower and educate 200 traditional birth attendants in rural communities. So like they say in Africa, it takes a village to raise a child. So we are employing everybody here today, even if you are not in Africa, join us in fighting maternal and infant mortality. Thank you. So I want to thank you. This was amazing, and I love the mission of your company. Um, I guess I'm confused at the business model. It feels like an NGO. It feels like I'm not sure where the consumer, do, or do you consider what you're doing um, more of a service and an NGO where you're looking for backing to support moms, or are moms actually your consumer? Because it sounds like they may not be able to afford this, so they actually need it um, kind of donated to them. So just if you can explain more of the business model. Okay, um, so let me explain better. Actually, we sell these kits. We sell them. So one of the things we've discovered is that um, some women that stay in rural communities, some of them are farmers, so they have the money. But one of the major problems they have is bad road network to get some of these items. So we use women to get across to them. 
traditional bath attendants working in their communities, when we train them, we just bring this kit to them that you can start selling in your community and, community and making commission. Then that makes us them to sell the kit faster and they revert the, our own percentage to us. So that has been the model so far. Why some of them can't actually pay at once? So we have this flexible model plan, a flexible payment plan. It's actually five. $0.52. So as a mother, you can be saving as low as $1 every, every single month to get the kit from us. So that is how our business model is structured. Hi, Dr. Adirani. Um Really enjoyed the presentation. Um, interesting interesting uh, business model. I had two quick questions. The first question is, you mentioned that the, 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 the challenge is particularly in rural villages. I guess, what's the penetration of smartphones in those villages? Because your solution has a mobile technology element to it, which requires a smartphone. To what extent can it work with a, just a, a dumb, you know, text messaging based based phone, particularly with regards to the vaccination tracker? So that's the first question. And then the second question was around: Did the birth kits actually work in reducing infant mortality rates? And the reason why I asked that is I, I imagine that a lot of the reasons why there's high infant mortality rates is because you don't have an expert at the scene helping with complicated births. Um, to what extent does the birth kit itself reduce rates? Do you have data to support that? Okay, um, for, for the vaccination tracking tool, for a mother, you will always see a phone. It's just not a smartphone. But like I said, I mentioned in this that some of them can't read or write. So aside from the fact that we send them automated messages, we also call them. So we have a team in our office that actually they're in charge of vaccination, tracking that. So we call them to present their children for immunization. One other thing that we do, which I didn't, have not, I didn't mention also, is that we've been able to map out areas in all these communities where vaccine is available, that the document is online. So we just tell them that, do you know that vaccine is actually available in this community? You don't even have to work out to get it. So that is what we are using our vaccination tracking tool to do. And for the clean birth kit, the major problem first, before you have complication, is how can you deliver safely? That is even the major problem first. Most, most of the time when you go to rural communities, let me tell you an ideal rural community setting. You enter, it's like a Babala was trying, and um, people just come in. People just come in and they lie on the floor to have deliveries. I mean, women sometimes, because they don't have money, these home bath attendants, they just take anything. They sometimes use, they use or sometimes use knife to separate the umbilical cord of the baby from the mother. So sometimes they will use their mouth to remove mucus from the baby's mouth when it's being delivered. They will use their teeth to actually, I mean, a lot of funny, funny things like that. So if the major problem is solved on how they can have clean and hygienic delivery, complications might not be there. I'm not saying there are no complications because even people that have money that go to good hospitals end up having complications. But 85% of this problem lies around the fact that there's no basic tools they need to have basic and a good hygienic delivery. Basically.